What's going on guys? It's Kyle. Welcome to the Stock Goat YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering the overall market. We're going to go over a couple of earnings and we're also going to go over the SoFi stock which had an incredible day today compared to the overall market. We have some incredible information to bring to you guys today. Be sure to smash the like button and don't forget to drop a comment. What are your expectations heading into these earnings? And only if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. You can see here in my YouTube analytics, we have about 51% of you guys subscribed and about 48% of you guys not subscribed. That's over 5,000 people. So be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you don't have a YouTube account, be sure to make a YouTube account. I'm going to be keeping you updated on all the breaking news covering the SoFi stock. And guys, a lot of people have been encouraging me to get active on Twitter. So that's exactly what I'm going to do to help spread the SoFi word. And if you want a ton of SoFi bull porn, be sure to click the link in my comment section. That is the link to my Twitter account. Be sure to follow the Twitter and I'm going to be putting out crazy amount of information for you. Let's get into the video. All right, guys, you can see the S&P 500 closes flat on Wednesday. Wednesday, the same thing with the NASDAQ as investors assess the Fed's next move because they went on and they did a little bit of announcement on the minutes. And you can see right here, there was nothing in the minutes that suggested the Fed would be more aggressive than what the market has already priced in. So guys, it looks like a lot of this, you know, rate hike is priced into the market. And we have those details inside of the NASDAQ. You can see the NASDAQ finished flat today, but if we click that six month chart, guys, we are still in a massive correction of near 12% from the highs. So I believe a lot of these rate hike fears are priced inside of the market and you need to be buying up these discounts on these, you know, technology and growth stocks before inflation comes back down. Because as soon as inflation goes back into reversal, 6% or 5%, stocks are going to rally hard and you don't want to miss those massive reversals inside of the market. All right, guys, the SoFi management team is being extremely quiet, of course, you know, heading into these earnings, but you can see they are making some big noise inside of their, you know, app, their email communication. They are encouraging as many people as they possibly can to switch over to SoFi and sign up for the direct deposit, you know, 1% interest, guys. Earn more money on your money with up to 1% APY. So, guys, they are marketing this heavy. Everyone should have got an email today or an update on their app. I know I got mine on both. SoFi has very, very good communication into their app, and that's why you're seeing cross-buying accelerating faster and faster. As soon as a member signs up with SoFi, either for like a credit card or just investing in the stocks, you know, like I've been recommending to you with the SoFi Invest platform, SoFi will try to market their other products in a cross buy, you know, cutting massive, you know, customer acquisition costs. And that's either going to be, you know, a mortgage, a private loan, a student loan, et cetera. So cross buying is accelerating. And you can see they're trying to beef up deposits because they're going to be doing a ton of lending inside of 2022 now that their costs are going to literally be cut in half. All right, guys, you can see I'm falling about 66 growth stocks today. And you can see at the bottom, we got Roblox down 26%, Toast down 18%, and Shopify down 16%. These actually reported earnings, guys, and these are going, you know, with the fintechs. Even though they're not fintechs, they're more like e-commerce and stuff. These stocks absolutely got hammered, and I'm going to show you exactly why, and the reasons are very obvious. Roblox shares closed down 26% after earnings missed. Scroll down a little bit to get the details. The gaming company reported fourth quarter revenue bookings of 770 million below the 772 million, guys. Boom. Guidance, guidance, guidance. Even if you're behind just a little bit, 2 million, your stock is going to get absolutely hammered. And that's exactly what happened today. Roblox went down 26% on a guidance miss. You can see here Shopify plummets most since 2020 on slowing growth outlook. You can see Shopify plunged the most in almost two years after giving a weaker outlook for growth this year as online spending resets after the COVID-19 induced boom and consumers face higher inflation. So guys, G word, G word, G word. Guidance is absolutely killing these fintechs and also these e-commerce plays. There's literally been only one company to make it out of these nasty Q4 earnings. And as we can see, Upstart is the only company to have a massive, massive, you know, move 30% in the green. I believe they finished up even higher today. So as you can see, fintech and e-commerce, absolutely terrible. I believe we're saving the best for last, the SoFi stock guys. And I believe they're going to give us an incredible 2022 guidance because of the bank charter license is 100% completed. All right, guys, just going back to um, the 2021 investor presentation, we can see they put on their guidance for 2021 
980 million. So the SoFi management team has guided over a billion dollars. I believe it's like a billion dollars and 50 million or something like that. They might come at about 1.1 billion or something like that. But guys, as you can see, we have beat the 2021 guidance. We are looking extremely bullish to beat this number, the 1.5 billion. I'm telling you right now, if we come in under this 1.5 billion, the SoFi stock is going to go down and it's going to go down pretty fast. I would estimate anywhere from 15 to 30% if we don't come in over 1.5 billion. But now if we come in over 1.5 billion, I'm going to show you what the higher estimates are. I just covered this in the last video, but I'm just going to recover it for anybody new to the channel. You can see the average estimate right here is 1.44 billion. You want to be over the average, of course. The low estimate right here is 1.34 billion. I definitely don't see this in any way, shape, or form. And then the high estimate, this is what I'm looking for, guys. If we come in over 1.66 billion, we are going to moon dramatically. So remember, the guidance for SoFi's investor presentation was 1.5 billion, but that was with you know student loans, and we lost the student loans. But think about it. SoFi has other revenue streams picking up the slack. So guys. We need to come in over 1.6 billion in my personal opinion. And I did a little vote just to show you guys what all of you guys on this YouTube channel think of their forward guidance for 2022. We can see people are extremely bullish. We had a 1,200 votes and we had 39% of you guys say 1.9 billion in revenue. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we have a lot of people saying 1.3 billion. So as you can see, nobody knows what the heck is going on for guidance. I'm going to go with, you know, 1.6 a billion or more. That's my personal opinion. I mean, if things get into the 1.7 billion range, you know, with the options trading coming our way and also margin investing going to give us more uh, interest, I believe 1.7 billion could be a possibility. So they might start us at 1.6 billion revenue and guide us up to 1.7 billion revenue uh, throughout the first one to two quarters. But guys, we have to come in over 1.5 billion. I'm telling you right now, if we want to moon, you know, like upstart. And just going back to the stock movement today, I mean, it was terrible. I mean, Twilio, Matterport, C Limited, PayPal, four, everything down, three, Cloudflare, Marvel, Spotify, Sentinel One, dozens of twos. Uh, now we're getting into the green. Okay, now we're in the top 20. Remember, guys, this is over 66 growth stocks. Nobody's even finished over a percent yet. Amazon, Walt Disney, some of the mega caps. Guys, take a look at this. SoFi finished in the top three today. That's extremely bullish. We can see Upstart finished up 35%, but SoFi was in the top three. So you can see, you know, the confidence heading our way, you know, for, you know, lending businesses right now. Looks like lending is very strong while e-commerce is finally taking a massive hit because they're not able to beat those 2020 comps at all. So we're looking extremely bullish. I believe Upstart put out about 1.4 billion in revenue. So guys, we're looking for a nice reversal, you know, heading into earnings. I believe earnings is on the first. That's about nine business days away. I really like the SoFi price movement today and definitely has some good buying opportunities at these levels. Once again, we can see all the banks have been accumulating a total of about 21 million shares on this last three month sell off, you know, with all these inflation fears, that's a value of around $273 million. So a lot of accumulation, uh, even banks coming in from Canada, uh, accumulating heavy. So this is extremely bullish banks from all around the world. We also have SoftBank, I believe is in China one of the biggest holders of the SoFi stock. So banks from all around the world are accumulating uh, the SoFi stock at these levels right now. All right, guys, and we can see Bernie Sanders here, you know, blasted SoFi, you know, I believe during the Super Bowl on the 13th. And it says, how does it happen that SoFi, a student loan refinancing company, could spend $625 million to put its name on the LA Rams football stadium when 45 million Americans are drowning and 1.8 trillion in student debt. Today would be a good day for the president to cancel student debt. And as you can see, I mean, this got 92,000 likes. So a lot of people are with Bernie Sanders. And we know a lot of people are going to have, you know, different personal opinions about this. You know, some people are, you know, drowning in debt and some people have paid back their debt. So they want everyone to pay it back. But guys, I also had student loans, you know, three to four years ago, about uh, 20,000, I believe. And I paid it all back on my own, you know, through the course of a lot of years, you know, even when I didn't have money. And what it teaches you is responsibility, okay? You don't want everything handed out for you for free. And that's what Bernie Sanders is for right now, uh, handing over the easy way. So I'm sure we're going to get a lot of mixed opinions. And once again, my personal opinion has nothing to do with the SoFi stock because I've been talking about this for months and months that SoFi 
is not worried about student loans because their business model is thriving in so many other directions. I don't even talk about student loans anymore. I just believe SoFi is fed up with all these, you know, pushbacks. I mean, guys, student loans have been pushed back for over two years. SoFi is pivoting their best into as many directions as they possibly can. So be sure to drop a comment. What do you think about, you know, this comment from Bernie Sanders? You know, should people pay back their student loans? Should they get a little bit of forgiveness? Should they be encouraging more refinancing to lower the debt uh, interest? I want to hear what you guys have to say. So be sure to drop a comment on this matter. Once again, guys, I'm active on Twitter now. You guys have encouraged me to get more active on Twitter. So be sure to click the link in my comment section and be sure to subscribe to the Twitter. And if you made it to the end of the video, I want to say I really do appreciate it. I enjoyed doing this video for you. I believe SoFi is at the top of the food chain for fintechs right now with a wide diversified business model, guys. They have so many different revenue streams coming in and they are continuing to add more revenue streams. I'm going to be going over the Pagaya partnership more. I've been talking about that on Twitter. This is going to be a massive boost in their, you know, volumes, you know, being able to lend to more people without, you know, extremely high credit scores. And this is going to boost revenue significantly. Uh, they're going to have no credit risk of, you know, adding these new members. I believe SoFi is going to be taking full advantage of these deposits. SoFi is able to give back to the customers because they don't have that massive overhead on real estate. We know that over 4,000, you know, banking branches have closed down because, you know, there's not as much business as there used to be with these digital finance companies popping up left and right. So I believe this is a massive, massive, you know, shift that's happening, you know, very, very quickly. Digital finance and digital banking is the way to go. And I believe that legacy market for banking is going to continue to show weaker and weaker growth throughout the years. Once again, my name is Kyle. Hope you have a great day. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. See you later.